we found that the, the average thickness of the undeformed ice, that's the, the, the holes which Penn drilled, was about 1.8 metres, which is typical of first-year ice in the Arctic. That's ice which has only reached, only had one year of growth. The main conclusion, I guess, was that the area, the whole of the transect that Penn did was in first-year ice, and the part of the Arctic that this was done in is a region that in the past has been largely composed of multi-year ice. So one of the ways in which, we're, one of the reasons in w for which the, the Arctic ice is disappearing in summer is the fact that um, multi-year ice is shrinking back, where it's making its last stand, uh, north of Ellesmere Island and Greenland. That's in one particular part of the Arctic Ocean. And the rest of the Arctic, which used to be composed of a mixture of first-year ice and multi-year ice, now seems to be composed entirely of first-year ice. This, this ice is thin enough that, with the increased warming that we have in the Arctic, it mostly melts or breaks up during the summer. So it's a very vulnerable kind of ice cover. And we know that in future years, um, th this retreat is going to increase because more and more of the Arctic is being... Uh, covered with first-year ice rather than multi-year ice. So it, it won't be very long before we have to start thinking of the Arctic as uh, an open sea. The, with the amount of open water we now have in summer, the Arctic Ocean warms up during the summer months so that it's, it takes more cooling to, to get it back to a freezing condition in the winter. And also the, the open water absorbs more solar radiation, that's the albedo is lower, and that feed produces a feedback which itself leads to more rapid warming. Um, I don't have to probably say in this context here that uh, we are at a crucial time for climate change. So let me take this, what has been said here, one step further and say that in that respect, a most important significance of the Catlin Arctic Survey data lies out with the Arctic. It points to how climate change in the Arctic will affect all of us and earlier and stronger than predicted. And this is because, as Peter has already mentioned, the Arctic and especially the Arctic sea ice hold a crucial and central position in the Earth's climate system. Remove the sea ice and we are left with a very different, much warmer and very different world. We have recently summarized um, these newest signs uh, passed the fourth assessment report of the International Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change in 2007 because important evidence is accumulating that shows how climate change is actually hitting the world earlier than, than projected and how our Earth is more sensitive to the warming that we introduce. We have released the Arctic Climate Feedbacks Report in this report, the sea ice and its condition is holding a central position because it's, it is um, responsible in parts for what is called Arctic amplification, the fact that the Arctic is actually warming much more than the rest of the globe. But on from that, that report actually shows what, are the, what is the current understanding, the current scientific understanding of what it actually means to all of us uh, that the ice is melting. And it points a very sobering picture of what the diminishing ice and the warming temperatures in the Arctic actually mean for our weather, atmospheric circulation, because most of the weather that we experience in the northern hemisphere is really, uh, is really made by the heat difference between the tropics and the Arctic. If you diminish that cold in the Arctic, you change the fundamental patterns of weather in the Northern Hemisphere, of atmospheric circulation in the Northern Hemisphere. You will actually impact also on ocean currents, and you will impact on how the Greenland ice sheet and its melting will affect global sea level rise. Another very important aspect mentioned in three chapters in this report, also starting off with the sea ice and the diminishing albedo and the Arctic amplification of temperatures that result from it is the effects coming out of the Arctic of the Arctic carbon cycle. There are about twice the amount of carbon held in Arctic permafrost soils than is currently uh, contained in the atmosphere. 
there is an immense and very poorly quantified uh, amount of methane hydrates stored in subsea sediments in the Arctic. And in some regions of the Arctic, this methane hydrate is already becoming vulnerable and increased methane emissions over the ocean surface in the atmosphere above the ocean have already been recorded in the last two years. What you see here with this diminishing ice stick is the result of a warming of about one degree globally. We are already committed to 1.4 degrees globally. Thank you.